Well, hello there, it's Heather Kernew, and this is part three of our series on God is coming to set the captives free from past vows. So in part one, we talked about what an inner vow was. And you know, basically, it's the fruit from trauma. Something happens to hurt you. What you do is you judge the situation, you judge the other person, you may even judge yourself. It leads you to make a vow, which is like a self-promise. Out of the self-promise comes more fruit because then bitter roots take place and um, and it begins to manifest in your life. For example, have you ever heard somebody say, oh, I can't believe I just said that. I sound just like my mother and I promised I would never say that. That is an inner vow. So that was part one. If you missed that, it's one of our glory services. So we explain some spirit led teaching as well as communion and ministry and people get healed even on our reruns. Okay, moving on. We gave some examples in part two, uh, real life stories from different people I've ministered to. So now we're on part three. And you know, the thing with, with inner vows is you can live years and years and years and not realize you've made an inner vow. And I hate to say this, but that's happened to me. I've lived years and years and years, never realizing I'd made an inner vow. And so tonight we're going to talk, I'm just going to list a bunch of inner vows and um, believing that the Lord is going to sort of resonate inside you that you may have made one of these inner vows because inner vows will erode your relationships with people. It will be a barrier between you and the Lord because basically what you've done is you've come against God's commands and his principles. And in your heart, you have built a vow a judgment, a bitter root. And that will have a huge implication on how your life rolls out. For example, if you judged your father when you were a little girl, in whatever area you judged him or you judged your mother, it says honor your mother and father and all will go well with you. And in the very area that you judged him or her, you will have issues and you may say, well, the thing is, is that sometimes it's very hard to detect unless you intentionally spend some time with the Holy Spirit and give him permission to show you. So Holy Spirit, come, we give you permission to shine your light on our inner vows and judgments and our bitter root expectations. We desire freedom. We want to be set free in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Okay, so here are some very common inner vows. And um, if we judge people, we could judge ourselves or we could judge situations. Okay. And this is the, some of the vows that we make. I will never trust anyone. I will protect myself and it will never happen again. I will trust no one. That's a vow. I will not let myself love so-and-so again. They hurt me. That's a vow. I will not allow myself to be vulnerable. I will keep to myself. I will not let anybody hurt me again. 
I will not forgive that individual unless they apologize to me. I will not put myself at risk again by doing something ridiculous. I will not trust church authority again. I will not talk to that individual over there because they hurt me. I will not ask anybody for help again. I will not allow myself to feel pain again. I just will stop trying. I will remain separate. Now, and those things that you vowed would not happen and you would not do, you will do those very things. And that's the way it works with inner vows and, and with judgments first, inner vows, and they become bitter expectations, or you could call them self-fulfilling prophecies, if you like. They will begin to manifest in your life, okay? You may judge your parents, like I said, and oh, all of a sudden, the area that you judge them, you'll begin to act that way. Or you may start to put yourself down, and you may judge yourself in the following areas, and they will, by goodness sakes, it'll happen. Okay. Uh, you may say, I'm a loser. I am less than others. I will have more problems than others. Oh, well, that's just the way it goes. Referring to a negative thing. And that very thing will begin to manifest. Well, I'm ugly and I'll always be overweight. You make that vow, try to lose weight. It's not going to happen. I'm unattractive. I'm clumsy. Now, here's another one. I am accident prone and I don't know why. You see, you've said something, you've claimed it, you've made a vow. It resides in your heart. Resentment sets in and I can tell you right now, you, you're going to have accidents galore. Okay. Well, nobody will back me up. I'm not a good speaker. I will always be different and I will always be an outcast. I'll never fit in. I'll never find a place where I belong. I've always been shy. That's just the way I am. If, if I trust anyone, I know they'll hurt me. So I won't trust anyone. I cannot trust my own judgment when it comes to men. If anyone says they love me, I'm not going to trust them because I've been hurt in the past. So there's a bunch of inner vows there. Okay. Now, have you ever been in a situation where you never, in, in all reality, you never have enough money? And do you know that could actually be from an inner vow that you've made somewhere along the line? I will always be a day late and a dollar short. Inner vow. I will always have money troubles. I will always be unemployed. I will not be safe financially. No one trusts me to do a good job. I will not be a bum like my parent. Those are all inner vows and they will all self-fulfilling prophecies, all bitter root expectations. Okay. Here's some, here's some common inner vows uh, in regards to marriage. I will not get a divorce, but as of this moment, this marriage is over. I will not trust my spouse again. I will not trust, um, I will never marry anybody like my father. My father cheated on my mother. I will not let my spouse control my our relationship. The first man I married was an abuser. I'll never marry an abuser again. I will not allow myself to be vulnerable. I will not allow my spouse to hurt me again. 
I will not love or be nice to my spouse again. I will not give affection or receive affection from my spouse again. I will not want to touch or be touched by my spouse again. I will not let my spouse get away with offending me again. I hate my spouse, but I will be civil to him or her in public. And do you see, these things will manifest in the negative for you, okay, in the negative. Some more, just a few more of these, because I pray that God will shine the light on you. Or, you know, sometimes you can see them in other people. Like, I've seen behave somebody behave in such complete opposite of who they truly are. And I've wondered, where did that come from? Okay, so these things are to help you, but these things can also help you recognize uh, judgments and inner vows and bitter roots in other people so you can help them get set free. And I will never fly on an airplane. I will never fall in love again. I will never have kids. I will never get married. I will always follow the crowd. I will never trust again. See, these are these are all things that we just say flippantly and we don't realize the consequences of these things. Okay? I will always be poor. Oh, men don't cry. I'm not going to cry. So... You know, I could I could spend hours listing these. But once again, we just pray, Holy Spirit, that you come in our quiet time and overtake us to show us where we have made judgments, inner vows, bitter root expectations. Show us in our own lives where we have repeating cycles happening and we don't know why. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for setting us free. Thank you, Father, for giving the prophetic word that this is the season for encounters. This is the season for growing closer to you. This is the season to be set free from all encumbrances. This is the season for promotion. In Jesus' name, on the inside to impact the outside. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Don't forget, part four is our prayer to set you free. See you then. Bye-bye.